It was on camera. Working him up. So what are you doing? Here, we're just doing the sketch. You just want that for volume, right? Yes. Okay, we're just doing the sketch. Okay, let's see what we've got. First, I'm going to spray all my paints to get them a little wet. You want to do that. And I had to decide if we were going to do a brown bear or a polar bear, which would, would be white. I decided on a brown, but if we were to do a polar bear, I would start with the background first and shade the bear pretty much like Mrs. Castleberry showed you with the snowman. Because we're doing layers, I'm going to start with my lightest color first, and I'm going to use a yellow ochre. And I'm going to use lots of water with it because I just want this to go down real quickly. And I'm going to put it all over the bear's face. Now, I won't always talk when I'm doing this. Because in a minute, I'm going to change to a different color. Because this is so light. Now I'm going to add some darker browns. And I can mix them with the other one. Or I can use some straight. And I'm just going to dab it on for the second layer. And you can do this while the first layer is wet because it'll work better that way. If you do it after it's dry, it doesn't blend. It'll just sit on top of the yellow. So we're doing that. If I want a little darker, I can add some more of the dark brown. I can even add some black to the dark brown. Touch it some more. It might be a little darker than I wanted it, but that's okay too. Sometimes you go with the flow. And I'm just dropping it here and there. Now this is where I'm not real happy with the dark, dark. So I'm going to take some of that dark, dark off. And use some of the lighter, maybe a little red color. And because the paint's all wet still, you can go right over it and it doesn't hurt. And we know all bears don't have rosy cheeks, but we're going to get all my paint characters have rosy cheeks. A little more dark. Now if you want your bear to look a little bit on the textured side, we're going to add just a little bit of table salt, just a little smidgen, and we're going to sprinkle it around where his fur is, and then we're going to let that dry. You should have seen the salt changing some of the paint. A lot depends on the paints you're using and the paper and all, but you can see it's sort of got more of a scruffy look. So now we're going to work on the muzzle. We're going to go back to that light yellow and we can actually put it in the whole area. Again, and this is where he gets his rosy cheeks. Just a little bit of red. And it'll spread out, and that's cool. Use a lot of water. 
I'm going to need to let his face dry before we do his nose. So let's move on to, we'll let this part dry for a while. I'm going to move on to his hat. And as you can see, I always take the paint out of my pan and I put it on my palette and add water to it. So here goes his green hat. We're not going to do much shading yet, but we will do some. We're doing this while his face dries, because if we t did anything around his face, it would all smear in together. So we're doing that, and we're going to add a little different green, just spice it up a little. You see, I let some of the other green show through. We'll do a few stripes. They'll blend in in a minute. But it's a fuzzy hat, so now we'll let this dry. Okay, while those are drying now, we're going to put in the red for his red Christmas sweater. And you'll see, once again, lots of water. On my palette. Letting the paint do what it wants to do more than what I want it to do. I can take my paintbrush and just use water and bring more water down into it. Like the hat, it's fuzzy so it could have lots of texture. It could also have white areas because we're going to do something else to it. Right now we're just going to do a little bit of the shading by adding more of the red. Haven't had to add any other colors, just the red. And now we're going to let it dry. Doing a little bit of shading on the bear. Now just by going over the bear with the same colors I used before, mostly the medium brown. You'll still get some of that salt. Now I need some, smooth it out a little. Just add water and it'll smooth it. You can see I did his ears already with the pink while the other paint was drying. Okay, well let, let's put in his nose real quick with some black. I'm going to add some white later, so now it's time to dry again. What we're going to do is put the background in, and to do that, I just take plain water first and go all over where I want the paint. Not a river's worth, just all over. Then I can take my paint. I do have a bigger brush, but you can do it with a small one too. You just have to work really, really fast. Because you don't want paint to dry. You like to keep it wet. That's why it's called watercolor. You can see over here it's still damp. Oops, sorry. Janelle's dad's the cameraman now. Oh, Mrs. Castleberry, sorry. <laughs> okay, and now I'd like it to look like maybe it might be snowing, so we're going to get that salt again and just sprinkle a little. And it will change the texture and it'll give you a little bit of a snowflake feel and then we'll change it okay and of course it's got to dry okay I'm just going to do some pencil work for you and we're not going to do it like a coloring book but we're going to do it lightly 
and I'm doing what's called anchor points. When you see me do it dark there, they just sort of anchor things. And I'm coming down, and these two things meet here, so I'm going to make it a little darker there for that anchor point. Come down this way, and there's an anchor point there. You can Sometimes my pencil hardly touches the paper. And sometimes you can do it darker. But we're not going to do it like a coloring book. Okay, now I'm going to do around his ears and in certain spots do those anchor points. Usually it's where things come together. We're going to stop here, and real quickly, I'm going to do his mouth, make his eyes a little rounder, a little darker, and I'll finish some more pencil while your paintings are dry. I'm going to tear some paper now to make his Christmas sweaters. You know about Christmas sweaters, and I've tried two different papers. And I tried this one first, and it was okay. But this one is more bizarre, I guess, looking, and it will go better with the um, Christmas theme of ugly sweaters. So first I tear a strip. Let me show you on the green paper since I have one. And I just, now you find paper has grains going different ways. One way it's easy to tear, just like fabric, and this way it's a little less. It wants to do more what it wants. Now let's go back to this. We're going to take it, take our strip, put it down, and just draw a quick line and cut. And we're going to keep doing that. Just put it down. Draw your line and cut. And then we'll glue them down in a minute. I just use a regular glue stick to glue these down. Um, any kind will work. This is the kind I use. And as I look at him, you know, he's, his sweater's gotten away from us a little. So what I'm going to do is texture up his hat. To help with that. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to give it some dots. Maybe put a little of the purple up here. Just a touch of it there. And I think we're done with that part now. The last thing I'm going to do is just do some snowflakes. A little snow with white. You can do it with white paint. Probably do it with chalk. But if you do it with chalk, it will rub and smear. So this is just something you can do. But you don't have to do either. Now on his eyes, I also want to make him look alive, so I'm going to put a little white dot here, a little white dot there to make him look alive, and I'm real happy with it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Always remember to sign and date your artwork. And I hope you enjoyed this. I did. Bye-bye. <laughs>